Well, just since posting that first video on sinking the barrel, uh, I've had a couple of questions about the tools I'm using. And um, again, I do not have a professional set of tools. And, and so what I have are four hammers here, and I got a couple more tools uh, back home that I'll be bringing in to work on this later. But I have, a, I have four hammers here that I bought, you know, 35, 40 years ago in order to, to first get some training in how to build and tune pans. And um, back then, we were using, this is an eight pound sledge, and you can see that the surface has been ground down so that as I strike, I don't leave any sharp uh, gouges in the steel. So um, all of these hammers are at different weights. This one is almost entirely for sinking. There's not much else you can do with one of these. You might be able to tune bases with one of these, but that's a big hammer. And here's a six pound, and again, the surfaces are very rounded. And then as I get this pan sunk and, and begin to craft where the notes are going to be and so forth, I'll be getting into smaller hammers, and this is a 32 ounce hammer that uh, is my favorite one. It just feels good for some reason in my hand, and it's very nicely rounded. Um, here's a 24 ounce, same thing. These are just ball peen hammers or sledge hammers, and they've had the handles cut off, and then they've, they've had their surfaces ground. Now, a professional tuner, after they've sunk an instrument and they've scribed out where the notes are going to be, professionals have flattening hammers. They're hammers that have surfaces on them that are designed to flatten the spaces in between the notes and create that smooth bowl. And I don't have a flattening hammer. It's a very specialized, um, cool looking tool, but I don't have one. So my sledgehammer is gonna have to also double as my flattening hammer. So you'll see as we get into this uh, that I'm gonna have to use um, my few simple tools very uh, creatively in order to achieve anything close to, um, you know, what the professionals can get. Okay, well, I'm at, I'm at six and a half inches deep now uh, from the rim down to the uh, middle of the bowl. And um, I need to start thinking about um, what kind of pan it is that I'm building and uh, you know, what shape it needs to be and how deep it needs to be. I do notice that as I go deeper and the metal gets thinner and tighter, that it responds differently to the hammer. Um, in, in a way, I can almost sink a little faster now because the metal is thinner. And so each one of my hammer blows displaces more metal as I go. But also, um, the metal is a lot more tense than it was. And so the hammer really bounces back at me a lot more than it used to. Um, just working the metal, uh, I have noticed that, that really uh, this feels like kind of like I'm ironing a fabric now. And I'm, I'm, I'm distributing, like imagine a, an elastic fabric, and I'm distributing the elasticity in different places, and I'm getting rid of wrinkles and, and tension areas and so forth. And it really is like a fabric that I'm, I'm just bending this fabric. And um, so I'm going to continue uh, another inch and a half or so, and um, I'll bring my in other instruments in here to take some measurements, and then we'll get on to the next step. Well, I have two uh, special friends here with me today that I brought uh, to my workspace here um, in order to take some measurements. And um, these are the two professional pans that I have spent most of my professional life standing behind. And um, this is Betsy and this is Snowflake. And Betsy I acquired from uh, Andy Norell, I think in 1986. And um, he probably had Ellie Manette make a whole bunch of instruments and then um, decided which ones he wanted to keep. And then he sold 
off a bunch of the other instruments to some of his, um, you know, uh, friends or colleagues or whatever. And um, this one, I remember he, he called me up six months later and asked if he could buy this one back. And I, I as respectfully and politely as I could decline because it, it seemed like a really good instrument. And so um, I, I kept it and I'm sorry, Andy, but it served me well for a really long time. Uh, this one is um, one from, I think it's around 2010 is when Ellie Minette made this instrument. Uh, it was Ellie and his, his crew, his team, who built this instrument. And the reason I'm kind of showing you these is that this, these play into um, how deep I want to sink that raw barrel that's right over there. Now, right now, that barrel is at six and a half inches, and so it's time for me to really start paying attention to how deep I want to go and what its shape is, what the shape of the bowl. I want to make sure that I have a nice, smooth, round shape and not like jagged edges or anything. Those will, there, there are some, some planes that will materialize later through other work, but I want to start with a nice, smooth, round bowl. Um, this pan here is, um, is sunk to a depth of, I think, seven and a half inches. And this pan here is sunk, is, is about three, uh, three quarters of an inch deeper, at about eight and a quarter inch. And it feels like this pan is about two feet deeper. Um, this pan is a little more difficult to play. The angles on the side notes are a little more extreme. And so my movements have to be a lot more drastic on this pan than I was on this pan. And, and the effect of that is that I can, I can play a little more um, effortlessly on this instrument. I can move a little faster. So I'm trying to come up with a balance of what I think a good depth will be to give me the real estate that I need for all of the notes that I need. But, but I also want the instrument to be easy to play. And so I'm going to, I think I'm going to go something close to seven and a half. Um, I might go another quarter of an inch deeper than that, just, just to give myself a little more room. I'm going to uh, continue sinking over here. I may take a, a couple of extra um, depth readings on this pan, not from the middle, but from other spaces just to see how deep this is in other, um, other radiuses, radii from the, from the middle. So um, I can make sure that I've got this right. Wish me luck. So I'm down to seven. I just, me measured, I just measured this and I'm down to seven inches. So now I really have to be thinking very carefully about um, shape, the shape of the bowl, and um, how I want to finish this thing out. So, because I'm going to stop at seven and a half inches. I have to be very careful here at the end of this process because um, one of the things that I don't want to happen on this is that I don't want to split it open. And the metal is very tight and very stressed right now and very thin in places. And um, if I'm not careful and I Give, give it a blow with the hammer where it's not a nice flat uh, surface. Um, I could split the instrument open and uh, the surface open like that and you know it would be just a, a waste of my time uh, having done all of this. And so um, from here on out I go slow and um, I, I look a lot and I feel a lot uh, in order to get a good bowl shape. And um, hopefully tomorrow night I, I'll have a finished seven and a half inch bowl uh, ready to scribe some notes in. Hopefully. It's hard work. Well, I am one eighth of an inch away from seven and a half inches deep and um, it's tantalizingly close. Um, in this last half inch of sinking, I have actually been um, taking lots of measurements. You remember all of those circles that I put in there and slicing the pizza? Well, that has helped me a lot as I have sunk the pan. Um, the pizza slices actually help. They create um, different little sectors in here and it helps me um, at, you know, work on the, on the barrel one sector at a time and I can identify sectors and so forth. 
So it's been very helpful to have it all segmented like that. But the best thing about it is that I can, then I can, near the end, I can go through like this, and I can drop down to one of my circles here. And I have the, I have the rim marked with all of my pizza pie slices. And I can drop it there, and I can slide it over to the other side to see if it meets exactly the same place. And then I can check this one, same, same. And I can go around and I can check depths uh, for the various circles in here to see what, where it's high, where it needs to drop a little more, and so forth. So I've been actually measuring almost as much as I've been sinking in this last half inch or so. And I'm really, really, really close now. I'm an eighth of an inch away. And the other, th the other thing that I do besides measuring is that I look at it in the light, as you've seen me do before. I look for reflections. But I also feel it. And I, go, I, can, I can start from the outside and go in like this. And I can feel that the inside is kind of flattened off a little bit. And so I feel like, like I've got a little more room to go just in the very middle. But I've already walked around it like this. And at, with my hand at various depths, and I can feel where the where it doesn't feel quite the same, you know. And I've I've uh, already addressed those, so I think we have a good sink here. Uh, and I'm gonna um, I don't I don't want to try to get too um, finicky about uh, this extra eighth of an inch. Um, it's not going to provide that much extra real estate for the notes. And um, I do want a really strong pan. I want to be able to hit it hard. So I don't want the metal to be too thin and floppy. And so I think I'm just going to go ahead and work the middle just a little more. I might get an extra sixteenth of an inch out of it, but I'm going to be close enough. So we're going to call this thing good tonight. And uh, we're going to move on to the next step. And the next step is where we begin to lay out where the notes are going to be. And so... Um, it begins, to, it begins to look like a pan, so I can't wait for that. I hope you're doing well. Ciao.